What's up guys and welcome to another edition of LangCast. I've got Dakota back from Language Learning Lounge. I don't know man, uh, you may have to just become a regular member. I, th- I think last week's podcast went really, really well. I think that um, I think that it was pretty solid. So um, I don't know if I, w- I want to consider you a guest as much as uh, just a regular of the show, man. I'm totally down with that. That sounds like a great fun to me. I really liked being here, so. Yeah, it was super cool. Uh, and which this is not what we're going to talk about in the podcast, but yeah, man, it's it's funny how things can bring people together. Like, mm-hmm. I did not even know who you were two, three weeks ago, um, and language has brought us together. And now I feel like I feel like we've known each other forever just because of our share of love of languages. It's, it's crazy. Yeah, I would agree. Like you said, we haven't known each other very long at all, but I feel like you know when you've got something. That you- really care about then it's you know it really helps you get to know somebody and make friends um absolutely which and especially on the internet now that's one of the benefits of the internet because we live far away from each other yeah so yeah probably i think it's uh i have a friend who's a massive chicago bears fan and they went to soldier field and i think it was uh, i think it was either a 10 or 11 hour drive oh wow it's a pretty far ways away so um yeah but today, what we're going to talk about today is um, last week, me and you got into a little bit of a discussion whilst just talking about random stuff, and uh, we talked some of the woes of <laughs> Duolingo. Mm-hmm. And so this week, we are going to just discuss. Um, I think the Duolingo topic is a good thing to discuss um, yeah. because people are always searching for Duolingo. And first and foremost, I want to say before we get started, in no way, shape, or form is this video a hatred. On Duolingo. No. Um, I think, in my opinion, even though we're going to talk about some of the issues, still to me, depending on the language, obviously, but I think Duolingo is probably the one of the best free softwares out there. It doesn't cost you a dime, so it's hard to complain about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. A lot of people think that critiquing things means that you dislike it. I love Duolingo. To a certain extent, I use it every day. Um, I think it's good to get you started in a language, and I think that it covers a lot of important bases. But, I mean, there's room to improve everything. And I think that talking about that is important, especially if maybe they'll hear it and work on some of these issues. Yeah. And I think, too, the other thing to mention with Duolingo is um, I think there's a lot of misconception about Duolingo. I think, for whatever reason, people seem to have this idea that Duolingo is going to take them from A1 to C2. And Duolingo has never stated that. No. But for some reason, people have it in their head. They're like, well, I did the whole course and I'm not fluent, which I don't like that F word anyway. But yeah, <laughs> um, I don't uh, I don't know. So so this is not a knock on Duolingo, but mm-hmm. we just want to discuss a couple of the issues uh, that we have. And, and possibly, you know, later on, we're going to get into some some... Uh, suggestion. So, um, do you do you want to lead off? Sure, I can start. Um, and it's the, I told you that I had another thing that I forgot to write down on my list of things. Oh, I just moved um, my, when my you picture. mentioned that it was free, I remembered what my fourth one was. Okay, and that's cool. yes, Duolingo is a free service, but it also has a paid subscription to it. Right. Um, as far as I can tell, its paid subscription just removes ads. Yeah. Yeah, I don't um, think there's anything extra. I don't think so. And like Memrise, you get a lot of extra features. You know, there's there's quite a few apps out there that when you pay for them, you get extra features. It's not just removing ads. And I think that because of the the people that Duolingo is in competition with, just removing ads for Tim not a enough. low price point. It's yeah. it's not enough. Um, I really wish that they would add at least something, maybe a few extra courses in mm-hmm. their there uh things that you can't get otherwise or something i think uh one thing just going on yours what i would love to see and this this goes into one of my issues but we can talk about it more in depth later mm-hmm. but one of the main things it, this would win me over i don't know if i'd pay ten dollars a month for it but removing in my opinion the worst thing duolingo has ever done is that health system for the uh, for the mobile app I don't know if it does it on Android, but on iPhone, it kills me. I can get into it a little bit later with more of the big issues that I had with it. But if they would remove that nonsense for the, like, if you could pay and get that out of there, I think mm-hmm. I'd be okay with it. But I agree. 10 bucks a month for just ad removal. I don't, 
to me, it's I, I like the idea of helping a company out because it's all free. Yeah, exactly. But that, but it's way too costly in my opinion. Yeah, there are a lot of people out there who want all of their learning apps and stuff to be free, and I don't think that's necessarily. I've paid for Memrise in the past before. I think Memrise is a great. I currently great have app. an active Pro membership for Memrise. Yeah, it's great. It offers a lot of really good things. Yep. But to just remove ads, I'm I'm not going to pay for that. I'll just take the ads. Yeah, like, it's absolutely. Not... It's super easy to skip. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Um, I will say that honestly, that's probably one of the big things. And I don't know, maybe maybe that was their goal. Is they were like, hey, you know, we just want to have it for the people that want to support us because the ads when you go to the website. Um, it's on the sidebar, so it's not like on a lot of yeah. games when it'll pop up and it makes you click it because it's trying to get those clicks. Mm -hmm. So they're very subtle about it. And maybe that's kind of the point is they're just like, well, we'll allow people to donate if they want to, but we're still not yeah. going to make the ads, you know. But again, 10 bucks. I think I'm pretty sure. Is that Does that sound correct to you? I think it's $10. Um, I don't remember. I've seen it so many times today already because I've done so <laughs> yeah. much Duolingo, but I don't remember because I just ignore it. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's pretty bad, so... But, you know, yeah, I guess they can do that. So it um, is a little bit more intrusive on the phone. But like you said, on the on the computer, it is way off to the side, which is where I mostly do Duolingo. Right. So, yeah, I, I do. I do most of mine. Um, I, I complain about it all the time, but I do most of mine mobily. Mm. Um, and, and as a matter of fact, I'll just do the I'll actually just move my bullet point. I'll, I'll do the health system now. So does it do you don't not know what the health system is? Does it not do that on Android? Or are you not familiar with it? The health system, are you talking about like um, everything becoming gold and... No, no, no. Okay, so no. Um, when you're using mobile, mm -hmm. you said you use desktop most of the time anyway, right? Yeah. Okay, so when you're using mobile, you, um, you're you going through your lesson and you have mm -hmm. five bars of health. Remember the old heart system that they used to have five or six years ago? Um, you had the three hearts and if you missed it, you failed the lesson. I think that was there the first time I used Duolingo, and okay. I stopped using Duolingo because of it. Yeah, well, this, it's basically back. You have five bars, and if you lose all the bars, you fail the lesson. But here's the kicker, and this is what makes me mad about it. When you fail that lesson, you can't just go back into the lesson to, you know, because to me, if I fail something, my first thing is I want to get back into it, see what I did wrong, and how I can fix it. Yeah. You can't do that. You can't go into a new lesson until you go and refresh old lessons to refill your health bar. Seriously? And not only that, it's five. I don't want to tell you wrong. I, I'll, I'm going to log. It's either four. I, I think it's five, but it it's four hours. Yeah, maybe it is four hours. Four hours to refill one bar. It takes 24 hours to refill all five. Are you kidding me? No. Why would they do that? That is yeah. definitely not on Android. It It is a big... As a matter of fact, let me see if I can pull it up real quick. We'll keep talking. I'm going to try to pull this up and make it happen real quick so you can see what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, but I don't like it because to me, it deters me from learning because when I learn, if I make a mistake, I want to jump right back in there and see what I've done wrong. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. Yeah, especially when it's still fresh in your mind. You don't want to come back four hours later when you've forgotten about it. Okay. See that? I'm at full um, health right now. I can't see that. Oh, I forgot to turn the camera off on the... Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I can work. imagine what it is. It's similar to the, the heart thing you said. Yes, it's it's just like that, except it's it's circular. I'm gonna sh I'll show this on video just for the, for the viewers, and then I, I can show you later. So, yeah. Uh, but you can see down here... There is a button to practice, and then um, you can actually refill it for the for the gems uh, and mm -hmm. stuff. But as you miss questions, it takes that down, and once you are out of health, you can't go back. As a matter of fact, I got I was on the third to last um, stage because I'm almost done with my Esperanto tree, which I've kind of okay. slacked on because I've been doing Spanish as I've talked about. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm kind of in maintenance mode, and a lot of the words I'm learning in Esperanto are just like. Like today, I learned the word uh, "greso," which is grass, because I was telling a buddy of mine, because uh, I speak to him in Esperanto every day, um, I was telling him I have to cut my grass because we just bought a house, and yeah. um, so I'll learn words like that, and, and I'm good conversationally, especially typing, um, mm -hmm. but anyway, uh, on the third to last tree, 
I had one health left and two questions, and I missed it, and it failed me. And so then I just couldn't do anything. Like, inst- I couldn't go back in, man, and it made me so mad. That's so frustrating. Yeah. So I would hate that. Yeah. It's, it's a deterrent. And, and I guess it's because they want you to make money. The CEO of Duolingo claims it's, oh, we don't want people to advance too fast, so that's a way that we slow them down, you know, because we don't want people to just overlook certain things and blah, blah, blah. And I mm-hmm. understand that, but the thing is, the only people you're hurting are actual language learners, because someone who wants to learn a language realistically is not going to bowl ahead like that. Exactly. So like we're we're gonna go at a speed that works for us. Exactly. Because you know most of us who like learn languages as a hobby, we know what speed we can learn at. Absolutely. So yeah, that's really frustrating. And it sounds like there's this huge thing about gamification, which is what Duolingo and Memrise is. It's the gamification of mm-hmm. language learning, which is great. It makes it more exciting for people who aren't like huge language nerds. Right. Um, but that sounds like it's taken the gamification a little bit too far. It sounds like it's turned it into Candy Crush. When you lose too many games, you have to wait to get your, your health back. That's exactly what it is. Or and pay. Like that, that's ridiculous. Yep. It's not it's that makes it too much of a game in my opinion. That's too much gamification and they need to they need to pull back a little bit on that. And the other thing that I hate about that too is the idea of, oh, we don't want you to advance too fast. And then if I say here's ten dollars, they're like Shh, move forward. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like it's exactly. It's not anyway. That that's my point on health. Um, I just want to because oh man. Um, but I will I will open the floor back up to your next critique of it. But I thought that that would feed in perfectly uh, versus yeah. waiting for a later bullet point. Yeah. No. Definitely. Um, my next thing is I believe we talked about this a little bit. I think you're the one that told me about it. Um, the audio. I hate the audio yes. so much. Um, it, I, it was you, right, that told me that um, Esperanto is the only one that has real recordings. Everything else is those sort of like vocaloid things. Mm-hmm. It's terrible. Like, I speak French. I speak French. I've got a degree in French. I use French in my relationship. I lived in France for six months. Right. I speak French. <laughs> and you can't, can't understand, understand the voice. what they're saying. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's terrible. Like, I, I never do the audio because of it. And like I, I turn them off all the time because I just cannot understand them. Yep. Ugh, it's no. it's frustrating to me, and I wish they would either invest in a better program that reads things aloud, or they make real recordings of people speaking. Um, yep. Not only does it sound terrible, but the pronunciation isn't always right. <laughs> right. Absolutely. It's it's um. That's actually was one of my bullet points as well was the uh, the the speaking in it and and I agree completely because um, and it's funny because I actually do have a lot of problems with the Esperanto speaking as well and mm-hmm. the only thing I can think of and we may have actually mentioned this last week but I, the only thing I can think of is maybe it's done that way so they can plug and play words so if you have um, el gato baby. Let uh, leche leche yeah leche Spanish lactose Esperanto um and, and so instead of having to re-record someone saying something else about a cat they can just take el gato and plug it into uh tiene gafas glasses what you know what I mean like and that's the yeah. only thing I can think of um but man, that's exactly what I thought it was as well sometimes it's bad in Esperanto the problem I have in Esperanto. Which I do want to do a, a uh, I do want to do a podcast on this eventually, which is the importance of verb conjugations. Because I'm a firm hater of verb conjugations. Yeah. <laughs> but learning Esperanto has taught me the importance. And the problem I have with Esperanto is, and you know, because you've studied Esperanto, the pronouns mm-hmm. are so similar. I make mistakes all the time. And so in the audio, if you hear somebody speaking fast, because the guy's like, oh, check me out. I'm a native speaker. I mean, you know, as native as you can be for Esperanto. Yeah. And the guy, he'll speak so fast. I don't know if it's saying, because if you say it fast enough, me, ni, li, she, li can sound very similar. Yep. And so when I hear Limanjus and I'm like, <laughs> I have no idea what you just said. What? <laughs> and so you'll get docked because you missed the question because instead of saying you eat food, you said I eat food, but it's because you can't understand the guy. Mm-hmm. 
exactly. Yeah, and like I, when things are written out, I constantly constantly get V and me mixed up because like when at the beginning of the sentence, because I'm just reading it quickly, and like a V and an N, there, there's a one line difference. Well, plus and, two study in Mandarin, ni is the opposite. Oh, yeah, <laughs> and so it's just like every now and then I'll just like. I, I do it all the time in my live stream too. I'll like glance at a, a pronoun. I'm like, okay, I know what that is. Um, yeah. And so, but that, that could just be me, but I think it's also a valid because, you know, like definitely you just said something to me and I didn't know what you said. Cause you said it really quickly. Um, yep. And that's what, you know, and that's what, I don't know. I, 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 the voice, it's not terrible. Yeah. But to me, and the other thing that sucks about the Esperanto course specifically, and this is not an Esperanto specific podcast for anybody watching. I know I reference yeah. it a lot, but it's the only language that I am conversational in right now outside of English, and I'm working my way up in Spanish, so it's just my reference point. But there's not, you know how in Spanish, or I, I'm sure French does it, you can hit the turtle and it'll mm -hmm. say it word by word. Esperanto doesn't have that. There's not yeah. a slow down. Which I guess yeah. the idea is to teach you how to hear, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, I mean, you got training wheels, man. You can't ride a bike before you start with training wheels. Yeah, and that's actually a huge debate that I've seen multiple people have, whether or not when you're learning a language you should slow things down or not. Mm. Because in the real world, you're going to hear things at native speed is the argument. Um, but that's not true. <laughs> Once someone realizes that you're not a native speaker, if they're not an asshole, they'll slow down for you. Yeah. Um, so I don't think slowing things down is a problem. Um because if but, you go to somebody in Spanish and you say "despacio por favor," they'll, yeah, they'll, gonna, slow, they'll down. slow down. Yeah, and they're not douchebags about it. <laughs> Definitely, and it's just like so. I think about arguments completely ridiculous, and I love that there's the option to slow things down for some languages on there. Right. Like I'm sure if you were to go to Paris, I'll just use French since you speak French. Let's mm -hmm. and well, of course you're 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 very very good in French. Let's say that that you're. Um, Okay, well, let's say you're Chinese right now, right? You're Mandarin. Yeah. If you go to, I know Hong Kong speaks Cantonese, but any province that speaks Mandarin, mm -hmm. and if you got a job in some business office and someone called and you were like, now slow down, I could see the problem there. Yeah. <laughs> but if you're going to a market and you're like, now I'm not sure if he said apples or if he said soap, I don't know words, but... You yeah. know what I mean? They're not going to be mean to you. They're going to slow down and help you out. Yeah, definitely. When I was in Japan in 2010, um, first of all, the group I was with, almost no one wanted to speak Japanese. I actually, my ja I took half a year of Japanese in university and two years in high school, and I went to Japan. And I was working as a translator for my friends because mm -hmm. no one wanted to speak Japanese. My right. Japanese was terrible. Like, people were so nice so nice and it was like i i had to like look words up in a dictionary at one point people were so like calm and nice and they like smiled and like you know like nodded at me it was great people people are nice people if you're putting in the effort they want to help you for it's the amazing most part. how different americans are about that is it not <laughs> that is definitely <laughs> true and i've noticed that that's a very that seems like a very specifically korean and japanese but well and vietnamese too my god dude let me tell you something. This is not on topic of the video. The <laughs> nicest people I've ever met in the world and most helpful are Vietnamese <laughs> people, man. Yeah. They go out of their way to make sure that you understand. Well, uh, it's crazy. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> Japanese and Asian. I had, I used to drive a Kia. Mm -hmm. And um, my front camera is going off. Let me make sure nothing's going outside. Um, when I had a Kia and I went to Bristol, which is a little bit close to me, um, mm -hmm. it's like two hours away. And my buddy had, uh, he had two Korean girls in the car with him and we were just hanging out and there was, there was a Japanese dude there as well. Very, very diverse group of people. Yeah. I told them I drove a Kia. Uh huh. Not, okay. Let me, let me prerequisite that story a little bit. I wasn't just out of nowhere. <laughs> like I drive a Kia. Um, yeah. <laughs> They were like, oh, cool, you know, do you have anything Korean? And I was like, my car is Korean. And when mm -hmm. I told them IKEA, dude, they stopped, like, bowed down, and not bowed down, but, you know, like, oh, yeah. thank you so much. Thank you so much. Like, yeah. It's funny. It's just funny at the cultural differences, man, because you come to America, and if you speak any other English, any other language but English, 
and not everybody, obviously not everybody, yeah. but you go to, depending on where you go, if you speak English and it's even slightly broken, you can run into a douchebag. Yeah, definitely. Like even here in Chicago, I've had, I've worked with people who complained about people not speaking English properly, like customers. And of course I had to uh, <clears throat> inform them that that wasn't very nice. Right. But like, well, it's just weird. You would think people in Chicago, Chicago, man. Exactly, but there's there's jerks everywhere. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, that is crazy. Um, but yes, uh, vo- okay. So we got <laughs> back, back to topic. <laughs> I feel like that'll happen. Then that that's okay. Um, yeah. But absolutely, man. Voice and that that was actually my uh, that was one of my bullet points as well. I deleted mm-hmm. that, so I will go into. I'm gonna go into one of my other bullet points. Which kind of goes based on voice, but it's not. Um, uh-huh. It's not necessarily they're speaking, and this is not really a knock on them. And there is no real way to do this great. No product does it. Uh huh. And I wish that because of that, people would take it out. But voice recognition is terrible. Yes. Because if I'm speaking Spanish and I'm supposed to say "Hola, cómo estás," which I'm sure I did not pronounce entirely correctly just there. I mm-hmm. could literally say "Hola, como estas," and it would be like, "Good job." Ding. I I find that it it approves a lot of things that I do wrong. Mm-hmm. Like I'll know that I, I'm I'm saying something incorrectly, and it'll just be like "Ding, next thing," and I'm like, "I didn't even finish the sentence." What and do you it, mean I got it right? Yeah. It's one of those things where you're in the middle of speaking, and right as you're speaking, you're like, "I'm not doing this correctly." Um, and you know that, so it's like you even just tell off because you're like, I'll have to do it again. And then it's, yep, good job. <laughs> yeah. And I don't understand it. And like, I think that voice recognition could be great. Like it, it, there's a lot of potential that's really important. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just not good enough. Right. And it's absolutely to me, it, right. they mm-hmm. should get rid of that. Yeah. Because, and I know that people will be like, oh, how do you get rid of a feature? But the problem is it's giving people false sense of securities Mm -hmm. in something that shouldn't be. And and at the end of the day, I heard a quote two weeks ago, actually, on, because even if I'm not learning the language, I'll watch channels. Yeah. Because I just love languages. Um, And I was watching, have you ever, I know that you're not into Korean, but have you ever watched Go Billy? Or heard Uh, of Go Billy? Yeah. I don't know if I have. Okay, Go Billy is it's just a YouTube channel. It's a dude. He he majored in Korean, lived in Korea for a bit, whatever. <laughs> and so, um, he had a guy on his channel, and I don't remember the guy's name, and I apologize for that. But the guy said the and so this this kind of goes against my statement, but at the same time, I just wanted to say this because this, I really like the statement. The guy said, "The only person afraid of mistakes." is you the yeah. native speaker you're trying to talk to doesn't care. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I do think that Duolingo should remove that because if you're te- the, th- the there's a difference in having confidence and being taught to speak incorrectly. Yeah. Um, I just want to throw that in there about the go Billy thing. Cause that ruled, I loved it, but um, yeah, yeah it, it, it's teaching people to speak incorrectly, man, because you, you can, you literally can, I'm going to do a test on that for a video one time. I'm going to yeah. sneeze into the microphone, probably cover, you know what I mean, and, yeah. uh, and see what it does, because it's, it. I don't know, it just doesn't set well with me. Yeah, no, I find it actually really frustrating, because like you said, like, I know, as someone who speaks French, I'm not learning much going through the French Duolingo, a lot of it's, um, my French education, a lot of the basics are really weird and spotty, I don't know how to use a bunch of pronouns I should know how to use, right. um, because I was never taught them in high school because my teacher quit halfway through and we got a new one. So the coverage didn't line up well. And then when I got to university, I tested out of a bunch of classes, um, which are the classes that would have taught me those pronouns. Right. So probably probably, I guess probably better. Yeah. Going ahead versus. Yeah. So I'm going through Duolingo to pick these things back up, but my French is much better than Duolingo could ever get you. Right. Um, and so like, I'm going through it and I'm like, I, I didn't say that correctly. And you're not saying that correctly. And it's just really frustrating to me. Cause like you said, 
you're being taught the wrong thing, right. which is what, what the problem is. And it'll lead to, and there's, there's no problem with making mistakes. If you're understood, a mistake is not a problem. Absolutely. Um, but if you're being taught to fossilize mistakes, then, then that's a little bit of a problem because you want to get it correct. You shouldn't like kill yourself to make sure you get everything perfect. But you don't want to purposefully learn the wrong thing. That's frustrating. Yeah, like if you just hmm? oh, because you're, right. you're right. Because relearning is harder than learning the first time. It, it's so much harder, and it's just it's really frustrating to just years down the line be like, oh, I learned it wrong. I just... Yep. Yeah, it, it absolutely it makes things harder, and I just I, I just wish that they would get rid of the feature, man. I don't like it. Um, I would much rather speak as I'm going through the lessons. You know, you got the things up and you're tapping the things and just, I would rather just read it myself mm -hmm. um, because there's no difference. And if I speak it into a recorder or not, because it's not going to tell me an accurate representation of whether or not I'm right or not. Yeah, exactly. And it's just, it's, it's frustrating. Yep. I, I think that the, I think that the technology could get there. I think it could get better. But it's it's not there yet, and especially because this is a little bit more um, advanced stuff here. Um, the going back to the audio and the way that it reads your voice, mm -hmm. um, they're not set up to do uh, things called super segmentals, mm -hmm. which are things like intonation and tent, or like you know where you put stress and stuff in sentences. Right. All of that, it's not there in in your audio being checked, like the voice check thing, or it's not there in the computer audio. Um, and that's actually where most accents come from. They don't come from singular sounds. They come from super segmentals. Right. That makes sense. And so, because if I remember correctly, like in, in English, we have stress in almost every single word. Mm -hmm. um, and I think in French, there's stress at the end of phrases, not necessarily in every word. Um, and then some languages, um, they care about syllable time and some care about um, um, stress. So English cares about stress falling in certain places, which is why we reduce a bunch of sounds. And so I want to becomes I want to. Yeah, absolutely. And yep. a Duolingo just can't do that. And so while I'm someone who doesn't care about my accent at all, a lot of people want to be they want to be mistaken as native speakers yeah, not, and not me at all but I, yeah I, I understand the want to mm -hmm. my goal is communication exactly mine as well but like duolingo is like doing a disservice to those people and they don't realize it because it's not focusing on the most important part of learning an accent yeah and there's a lot of stuff missed out i think about regular sentences that we say on a regular basis like i want to go to the store would just be like, I don't want to go to the store. Exactly. I literally said nothing at the beginning of that sentence. I just said, I don't know. But exactly. You understand it. Exactly. I knew exactly what you were saying. Yeah. What are you doing? Uh, I don't want to go to the store. Yeah. There's no words at the beginning. Yeah. So <laughs> that's that's hard to teach. Yeah. Just a slur of sounds. And yet, like, with especially with you were talking about um, the audio being so segmented so they can piece together a bunch of sentences. Mm -hmm. Um it definitely breaks apart that flow very clearly, yeah. which is great for very, very, very beginners. Yeah. But once you get anywhere in the language, you want to start hearing more native sounding things. Yeah. So. Yeah, absolutely. Because even even like um, a sentence like I am learning Spanish, for example, would be yo aprendo español instead of <laughs> somebody who would say it a normal speed of like no prendo espanol. Yeah. So yeah, it's super, super strange, man. Yeah. I definitely it it just bothers me. I was just thinking about this today as I was doing some of the French and I was like looking at the English and the French and I was like, neither of these are natural. Neither of them. this isn't how I would say this in English and Dude, it's not how I would say it in French. Some of the sentences are weird. <laughs> are super weird and i guess it's the the idea is building blocks mm -hmm. um kind of to set up a plug and play type mentality but man yeah. i and i you know i I'm, I'm blanking on it right now but you know i'll 
doing my lessons every day, I'll come across a sentence that I'm like, I would, I would never ever say this. At, like, this makes no, this doesn't make sense. Yeah. Yeah, I can't think of any at the top of my head either, but I know I've found some on live streams before. And I had to be like, everyone else, am I crazy? Or you would never say this, right? Yeah. This is wrong. Like, Yeah, yeah. It, it's super, super strange. They'll put super word, or super weird words in there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but, but yeah, voice recognition, that's definitely, definitely one of my top priorities I would love to see them get rid of. Not because I think it's a bad feature per se, I just think that until it can be done correctly, I don't necessarily know if I would like it in there. I would agree. So, do you want to move on to the the next point that I have? Yes, I'm talk. I'm gonna grab my charger. I, I can still hear you. I just gotta scoot back to grab my charger real quick. Keep talking. Okay. So the thing that I I really don't like is okay. So this is complicated. I like the feature in general on um, the fridge magnet things. Huh? But there's just one thing that bothers me about it, and Did that's the fact that... To show the frig fridge mag magnets now? Yeah, yeah, pull those up now. This is what we're talking about, um, fridge magnet-wise. And I never thought... I didn't... Look, I never considered these fridge magnets until last week when you mentioned it. But that right there... I'll take them down in just a second, but that right there is the frig ma fridge... I can't speak. Fridge magnets that we're talking about. Yeah, so things down at the bottom, so just single words or occasionally more than one word, and you just you click on them and they go up in the thing. And mm -hmm. I forget who it was that called them fridge magnets. It was one of my viewers on one of my live streams. And they were like, oh, yeah, I call them fridge magnets. And I'm like, that's exactly what they are. That's yeah. perfect. They'll never uh, not be fridge magnets to me. Yeah, and the thing that I, I love them, I think that they're great. I think that it's a great way to practice the grammar and the construction of a sentence, not needing to worry about doing typos. I do typos all the time in English. I can't imagine it in the language that I'm learning. You know what I mean? Um, so I think that they're great to focus on the grammar. But you can't reorder them. If you miss one, like if you miss the first word and you don't realize it, you thought you clicked it, but you didn't, and then you put in six more words, you have to get rid of all six of those yeah. words to put the first one back in. Yeah, yeah like, it can be weird. Why can't you just give us the ability to reorder them. I want the ability to reorder them. <laughs> now, I don't know if it's pinning on course. In the Esperanto course, I can rearrange them. You can? Yeah. Um, but it, it's kind of hard and it's kind of weird because and you just have to hold it and drag it past everything. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's it's not perfect. Sometimes when you let it go, it'll snap back. Yeah. And then other times you'll it'll take a second. Kind of like what well, you're you're a you're an Android person, aren't you? Yeah. So I don't know how the I don't know how the on the iPhone, like when you're holding an app, sometimes it'll take a second for that app to move to, for the other one to be able to place. So it's almost yeah. like that. Um but I haven't to be honest, I've never um I haven't tried it on the Spanish one. Um I've done a couple of other courses on Duolingo that I've messed with, like like German and I'm huge into Slavic languages. So I've tried like Russian and stuff, but I don't think I ever even got to a fridge magnet lesson in Russian. So, but in the Esperanto course I can, and I don't know if that's an Android to Apple difference or a course difference. It might be. It might also be that I just haven't tried in a long time. The last time I tried is You're when I was desktop doing my... too. Now that's completely different. Yeah. Do they even do those on desktop? Um, they don't do them as much. Um, I can't, I can't, I don't think they do them for French or Esperanto. Um, they let you type those ones, but okay. for Japanese and Mandarin, they do. Right, right. That makes sense. Um, and you also have the option to type, which is something I love about the fridge magnets. Um, you get the option to type it out for more of a challenge, or you get the option to just focus on the grammar. I love that. I think that's great. That's cool. Yeah. Um, but like the last time I tried to move them was when I was doing uh, my live streams for Japanese. Um, so it might have changed and I just haven't tried it since then. Mm -hmm. But even, even if they do have it and I just don't realize it, it sounds like it doesn't work very well. So they should still improve it. Yeah, definitely something they need to look into 100%. And I mean, and it's not that hard of a thing to change, I wouldn't imagine. And it, it'd be like a simple, nice change that really improves the use of the app. Absolutely. Makes it more user-friendly. Yeah, a and lot more. Ultimately, what you're going for is user-friendliness. Exactly. And then I know so. that you had said, I don't know if we talked about this in the last 
podcast or if I just I know that I think you talked about this in a live stream too and I'm, I'm confusing the two events so I don't know if it was mentioned on here last week or not mm-hmm. but also the, it, there's a problem in Japanese and Chinese fridge magnets where the words don't actually sync up the way they would naturally be split correct yes I actually just encountered this last night again and I wish I was recording it or something um, it doesn't happen as much Very in the the Mandarin, but it does a little bit. Um, but in the Japanese, it's really bad sometimes. I forget the sentence. It was something like, she is going to the store to buy apples or something. I don't know. It was a longer sentence um, by Duolingo standard. And it was, there were two fridge magnets for the entire sentence, even though there are multiple sentences in that word. And it split the the ver or the the pronoun she it's kanojo it split that in half Whoa. and i had the first half of that as one fridge magnet the second half and the rest of the sentence is the second fridge magnet wow it was dude. strange That's i so hate weird. it so much. <laughs> that would be like um i'm trying to think I'm of like an english like example cuz it would be like if if the sentence was there goes my mother to the store it would be the equivalent of one magnet being there goes my mother and then the next magnet being er to the store yeah exactly something like that maybe even more like th- is one magnet and air goes my mother to the store yeah. is the other magnet yeah. and i was just like why is this happening i kind of get it because there aren't spaces between words in japanese right so i can i, I i'm assuming that's where the problem lies that's why it doesn't split up as easily and as nicely. Um, I don't know how the program works, but I think it has something to do. I would imagine it just breaks its spaces. It just right. breaks, it breaks it up its spaces. Yeah, that, that um, makes sense. I mean, it sucks, but I guess it makes sense because, yeah, there, there isn't spaces. But when your brain is trying to read that, mm-hmm. it's, yeah, <laughs> it's tough. Yeah, when I'm doing the speed review for um, Japanese and Mandarin sometimes, because you can do a speed review. I can do it on my computer, but I can't do it on my phone. A little weird. Um, oh, yeah, you know what? I can't do it on my phone either. I could for a while. For a while, it allowed me to do it on Sundays, and it's gone now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was weird. Yeah. Um, and so when I'm doing speed reviews on, on my computer sometimes, I just, I can't do them because I'm like, I don't know where this word is. And then I notice it and like, oh, it's cut in half. That's why I couldn't find it. Yeah. You run into <laughs> some problems there because a lot of times, dude, imagine that on Esperanto where oh. words are pinned upon affixes. So you would see mono and then the next would start with like, Uyo, which is container, so the word you're looking for is wallet, and all you see is, like, money. You know, like, that would be chaos. It would be so hard. Oh, my gosh, man. Or, like, manjilaro, you know, like, silverware, like, oh, Mm -hmm. my God, that would be so hard. (laughs) Yeah. Like, it wouldn't be terrible if you weren't doing a timed review, um, because it would make you practice your affixes, which could be good. Could be a good idea. Um, but when you're under pressure from that time, like you're not thinking I need to build a word. You're thinking I need to build a sentence with words. Right. Yep. And it's, it's frustrating sometimes. That actually would be pretty cool for affixes for Esperanto, man. Mm-hmm. Having like, I don't know how they do it with multiple um, affix, like Manjularo, because it is Manji and then Elo and Auto. Yeah. Um, but. I'm sure you could do it, man. Just put it, be like, silverware, stem, manji, okay, what affixes make it silverware? I think that could be really, really cool. Yeah, I think they would probably have to, like, build a new exercise um, where, like, it gives you the whole base as a whole word. Because, you know, sometimes they'll they'll, they'll drop the end or they'll move the end or something. Um, So it gives you the whole word, and then you can just, like, plug them in and then, like, fuses them if you get them right or something. I think it would be best as a new exercise, but I think it'd be really interesting and fun, especially because although dual um, is, although Esperanto is the language that does that the most that I've studied. Absolutely. Um, it would work for other languages as well. Like you could use that in English. You could teach, you could teach. Um, verb conjugations. Exactly. You could teach verb conjugations. You could teach um, changing adjectives to adverbs. Like in English, for example, 
Um, I don't. Friend yeah. can be friendly, right? You know, just add the ly onto it. Like we've got similar. It's definitely not as heavy as it is as Esperanto is in that, but we've still got that. It can be used for almost any language. Absolutely. Spanish so. is mente and tion. Mm, so you exactly. That. Yeah, absolutely. I think that'd be cool, man. I think that would be a super cool feature um, that they that they should use. And yeah, like you said, it's not just uh, an Esperanto. It would be obviously great for affixes in Esperanto. Mm-hmm. But man, it, that's the thing, man. The key, in my opinion, one of the big things that any company needs to do is some sort of easy method to study and play to learn verb conjugations. Yeah. Um, because that's the... I, I would have no problem... Look, and I know that that's my problem because I have I can speak a really decent amount of Esperanto because I've been able to concentrate on learning vocabulary and I've not had to concentrate. I learned how to conjugate every verb form on the planet the first day I started learning. <laughs> and so I've been able to concentrate on just vocabulary building. Yeah, exactly. And... Grammar is the thing that everyone's afraid of, but vocabulary is so much harder. There's so much more of it. Absolutely. Versus just a couple of rules. Of course, I mean, you got some languages have a ton of rules, but yeah, absolutely. Like in Spanish, matter. I would love to know why I have to add K here. And don't just say because we like to throw it in sometimes. Why do I have to add it? Uh, and I'm sure there's a huge, like a, a really in-depth linguistics explanation you can get. But Oh, yeah. I'm sure it's like when the subordinate clause is introduced directly before a word starting with the letter T, you, you know what I mean? Like it's probably something super crazy that no yeah. one actually really knows, but it's just because you you speak the language, you just do it naturally. Exactly. That's yeah, because there's a, a bunch of things that you wouldn't be able to explain as to why we do it into English. Dude, so. I never knew this much about grammar, and I don't know a lot now, but I never mm-hmm. knew this much about it until I started learning languages. Oh my god. Completely off topic, but I actually didn't know the difference between good and well in English until I learned French. Really? Yeah. I just, it's, I, that's not something that, you know, my parents used properly. Um, so I never learned it. And then I was in high school when I, I was like sophomore year, I finally learned the difference between good and well. Wow. What is, like, so I'm guessing, like, because to me, good has always been, like, you have like a scale, something's good it's like this is solid and well is like well good is a, an adjective and well is an adverb like oh, the difference between bueno yeah. and bien i didn't know that until just now really it's, i've never <laughs> i mean so that makes sense that's why in esperanto when i use bone sometimes instead of bona it's like get the f out of here you're wrong yeah Cause it's, it's like we're looking for an adverb you dummy and i'm like oh my god yeah, and like that's the thing. Like learning languages will teach you so much more about your own language, but that's a whole other topic. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. I don't know. I feel like an idiot. I'm sure people are gonna watch this and be like, "Why the heck am I watching a language channel and the dude doesn't know the difference in <laughs> adverbs and adjectives?" But yeah, it's, I mean, you don't think about it in your own language because you no. just speak it. Exactly. No, like I did not grow up in. Like I feel like that's the thing that like poor people aren't going to use. Well, because we've got other things to worry about than whether or not we're using good or well properly. Absolutely. So, <laughs> um, I think that's a, a class dialect thing. It might. I just, it's like, very much might be. Yeah, I don't know what your background is, so I don't want to like speak for you, but like, that's definitely why I don't do it properly or didn't right. do it properly. No, that makes sense. I, I'm definitely not uh, definitely not rich by any means <laughs> at all. Um, I didn't grow up like living with like dirt floors, but like, you know. Yeah, we 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 uh you know we 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 struggled from time to times, man. We grew up. I grew up in a house with uh, it was four four kids. Mm. I have I have um, I have a brother and two sisters. So ah uh, yeah, we either had two or three, depending on whether or not my sister was locked up. So <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole different slew of problems there. So yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. Um, okay. Okay. So, was that your topic or mine? Yeah, that was mine. That was that my magnet. Okay, okay. Um, I have a couple more, and I'm trying to figure out where I want to go next, because I, I do have a couple more issues. Um, but I think I'll start with this, um, just to kind of go with it. A lot of people's issue with 
Duolingo, and this isn't necessarily an issue that I have because I feel everybody's different. I want to mm-hmm. hear your take on it, but it does feed the you know the the form of, of, of the cast here. Yeah. I see a lot of people hate Duolingo because it's not teaching you how to speak the language. It's teaching you how to translate. But to me, that doesn't bother me. Because you got to learn how to do it at some point. Yeah. Um, I think that's a complicated argument. Um, I definitely don't think that translation is... That's something that bothers me a little bit about Duolingo. Like, I obviously still like it. I use it daily. I just got a thousand experience the other day because I was right. bored I, and just I kept saw doing that it. On your, well, you, you showed it in your last uh, live stream. You're like, yeah. I got bored the other day. Here's, a, uh, here's over a thousand. <laughs> yeah, like, it's a fun thing to do, but translation isn't the best way to learn a language. Um, there's a lot of problems with using translation to learn a language um, because translation is a specific skill. Mm-hmm. It doesn't necessarily help you learn to speak, it doesn't necessarily help you learn to write because you're working with the one grammar and you're turning it into another grammar. You're applying the rules in sort of a sterile vacuum environment. Mm -hmm. Um, But I don't think it's bad. I think it gets you the basics. I think it helps you out. Um, I, I think it's, I think I talked about this before in a video. I think my, when I reviewed Duolingo, I might've touched on it a little bit. Um, it's not possible for an app to do something other than teach you to translate. Agreed. Um, 100%. I, there might be a way, but I don't know what it is to do that. You need people, humans to check your work. You to, for someone to create like authentic output Mm -hmm. and have it be graded. You need, you need a person there, which takes a lot of manpower, which would take a lot of money. Yep. Or you'd need to invent like this whole huge system that knows right. every single grammar point ever in a language and can identify it. And our, you know, translating apps and stuff aren't there yet. Like right. Duolingo is not going to be able to do that. Um, tr- translation, if you want to use an app as your main source of learning a language, translation is what you're getting. Right. Like the, it's, it's the only possible way to do it. The only thing I say in defense of the translation argument for Duolingo is that it's teaching you, even if you finish, I don't care, I don't know, man. I, I've seen people go back and forth on it. I would be weary to say you're an A2 if you complete, for example, the Spanish tree. Mm-hmm. I would not say you're a B1 speaker. Yeah. Um. The only So the only thing that I say, in, in not in defense of translation, but in um the realm of it being okay is that you're speaking at because even as an a2 speaker you're still technically speaking very very basic beginner whatever language you're trying to learn yeah and so i think that i think it's decent up to the point of getting vocabulary in your head and stuff like that and you're speaking at such a small level that as you progress past duolingo um, you're going to learn a little more grammar and stuff like that. I, I just don't, I don't think if Duolingo, ta- Duolingo taught you to a higher, like if Duolingo was like, we're going to get you to C2, it would fail mm-hmm. miserably because you can't translate your way to a C2 speaking level. Not at all. Um, but I think to an A1 or well, I guess technically A1 is when you start. I know people go back and forth on whether or not an A0 exists. Like, before study, but I feel like as soon as you learn hola or whatever hello is, you're like, all right, I'm an A1. I can yeah. say hello. Um, but I think that the idea of it teaches you up to, I, I would say you're probably an A2. You can probably hold a conversation, and that's perfectly fine. But I mm-hmm. also think that in very basic conversations, translation can get you by. Mm-hmm. Um so that's my argument, not my argument for, because I'm very wishy-washy on the translation I did too. You can't, you 100% cannot learn a language as a translation. You mm-hmm. have to learn how to speak it. Mm-hmm. But I think that exactly. Duolingo teaches you such a small level of that it, it can pass with translation. Exactly. I hope that made sense. I feel like I talked forever there. No, that makes perfect sense in my opinion. Like, that's the thing. A lot of people think that Duolingo is going to make you fluent. 
and it 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 won't. It gets you to I've seen anywhere estimates or people estimating anywhere from a, a high A one to somewhere in the A two range. I've never seen anyone estimate out of A. I've never seen anyone say you will get to B. Right. Um, and for that, like you said, when I'm starting off with the language. Sometimes I'm translating in my head to try and get words out. I don't have the ability to think yet. Like when you're at that level, translation works. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that I am almost 100% completely against immersion in the very beginning for people. Mm -hmm. um, I think it overloads them. I don't think it works for the most part because unlike children, adults have a language in their head already. Right. We've got experiences to work on. We've got different connections that we can make. We that don't sense, need actually. immersion. Um, I think the translating in the beginning can be helpful. And while I don't think it's perfect, I, I think like, especially when you're using a free app, like you're using a free app. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like they don't have the time or the resources to invest the manpower to have you put authentic output. Right. Like if, if you want to get authentic output, couple using Duolingo with hello talk, find a language partner. Like that's not, it's just, it's not what Duolingo is. Right. I, and I, I can agree with that. Um, I can agree with that completely. And I agree too with the, when you, honestly, depending on what it is, mm -hmm. there's a lot of stuff I can say in Esperanto without thinking. Mm -hmm. Um, but then like, it depends on how new the vocabulary word is to whether or not I would have to think and then try to translate that. But there is a lot of weird stuff. Again, yeah. I hate to keep going back to Esperanto, but it's 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 what I'm speakable in. So it's it's like my main point of reference. But um, yeah. as someone who studied it, there's not just one word for four. You've got three. You've got por and pro and pre. Mm -hmm. um, and they all mean different things, even though they're basically the same. Yeah, and you just kind of have. I guess "pair" can be there too, but so there's a ton of different ways. But it's if you say it in English or Spanish, if you use, let me start that over. If you use an Esperanto, there's a big difference in Porter. Um, God, man, I hate trying to speak off the cuff. Porter, Porter. Um, Tasso, tasso? Oh my god, I'm forgetting the word for cup. I'm confusing my Spanish. Yeah. Tasso is Spanish. All right, you know what? Um, no, tasso, tasso works in Esperanto. Is it? Yeah, it is Tasso. Okay, so we're going to use that. Porter Tasso and Per Tasso, even though they're both four, but kind of, but it means completely different things. Mm. Or pre, because pre would be about. So it, it's, yeah. it's like translation's not going to work there for you. Exactly. God, yeah, like I all like of those I words. I don't know if it made sense or not. I, I hope so. No, that makes sense to me. Like all those words could be translated into four in English, but some of them can also be translated into other things. Because while the while the word four works in all situations in English, it doesn't necessarily work in all situations in Esperanto. Right. Oh, uh, like in in Spanish, it's the same, right? There's por and there's para. Mm -hmm. They both mean four. But it's. But different situations yep. and then pre pre is because of so you say for but you're technically saying because of so you can say i'm going to school f for my family because you're saying like you're going to like better yourself for your family but you would use pre mm -hmm. which technically is for but yeah. it means because of and you would use that there you know versus yeah. so so yeah it's translation's not going to work. So you're going to say poor, and of course anybody who speaks Esperanto would know what you mean, because mm -hmm. whatever. But if you're talking about a, a quote-unquote real language, they would be like, you know, it, 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 it would sound weird. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And so. it's just, I don't know. I think I think that there's a time and a place for translation, and a lot of people hate it, and they shouldn't, because it's a useful skill, and it gets you in those low levels. Um when other other things don't necessarily work for yeah. all people. Like if I were to be put into an immersion in the very beginning, I would quit. I just, that's not how my brain works. I want to know the rules. I want to be able to translate things because um, translating things helps you find holes in your knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's, it's, it's useful 
at certain levels and at certain points and in certain situations. So I don't, I don't have a problem with it. I know a lot of people do. I think they need to just get over it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's funny. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that, that, that's, that's one of my big things is the translation argument. Like I said, that's not necessarily an argument I have for or against it. I see both sides of it. Yeah. Um, but that that was that one was translation. So I'll let you open the open the floor next. Um, keep it. So rolling. my next one is actually probably the what I would think the weirdest one. Like these are all features we've been talking about and how do you learn a language? Um, I think that they should add some sort of forum mm -hmm. into the the website. Um, I know that there are like these clubs that you can join, and I'm a part of a couple of them. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't even, I don't use them though, because the, there's so few things that you can do. I don't even know if you can speak to people on them. I'm sure you can like simple comments. Yeah. Um, but mostly I think it's just, it gives you updates on how other people are doing. So you can sort of have competition with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I think that having like a working forum for each language or maybe a couple or just giving these clubs that you can join a forum, even just a simple like chat stream. Do they have, um, they, is there not a discussion board? They're, well, see, cause some language have, has the discussion tab. Uh huh. Um, and you can pick on the side. Um, like for example, I just pulled mine up here. It's a mm -hmm. discussion stream. Granted, most of the time it's, it's not real. Like, are you meaning more of a forum for people just using the language? Yes, exactly. Okay, yeah, 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 I agree with that completely because most of these are, and I don't mind the the questions. You know, obviously you want that. Um, yeah. You, you want the questions and stuff like that, but it's like, at the same time, just a message board, and you can find them online. Yes, but how awesome would that be to have integrated into the site where, hey, I want to really practice my Spanish today. Click, boom, start reading. Exactly. You'll be there. You'll be seeing things from other users. So you'll be seeing other people making mistakes, mistakes that you make. It might help you build your confidence. Oh, I'm not the only one making mistakes. Right. Um, you'll hopefully have people who are politely correcting you because you're all in the same boat. Yep. Like, I think just being able to go in there and practice and talk would be really good. Um, most of the things that I've seen in the discussion are about the grammar and like, hey, I had this thing. Yeah. You know, it's it's not about it's not a place to hang out. Right. I think having a place to hang out would be even just like a simple one chat stream, like a chat room. Yeah. Like it doesn't need to be an in-depth forum, just something to where you can really get in there. Well, there's not really a better way to learn than to go ahead and start using like go ahead and start using it. Exactly. And not in an overwhelming way, because I know I know how you had mentioned, like, you know, not just total immersion straight from the beginning. But man, mm -hmm. after you study for a week or two, being able to go in there and just be, you know, just type a thing or two just so you're using it. Mm -hmm. And then you can try to pick words out here or there. And there's also a big difference in immersion reading and immersion speaking. Yep. Um, but yeah, I, I agree, man. I think that there's, if they want to have the discussion board for tips and tricks and stuff, great. But yeah, I would love to see a, just a message board of just like, all right, guys, this is just dedicated discussion in this language. It can be about anything. Yep. Exactly. And then like, you've got, you know, moderators, like if someone gets out of language, like maybe ask a quick question, like, how do you say this word? But like, get them back into that, that, yep. that language as fast as you can, you know? Um, because in all the places on the internet, I've seen a lot of places that are like, we're here to practice this language, but it always reverts back to English somehow. Yeah. Um, not all groups do that, but there are quite a few of them. Um, like I'm, I'm scrolling through this discussion thing now, and like almost all of them are questions. Um, like here's Welsh TV shows with English subtitles. That's great, but like it doesn't look like there are people just talking. Yeah. And <clears throat> I think that that would really help with, um, like you just mentioned that problem that some people have. It's all just translation. Just a simple chat stream for people would give them a place to use the language, and it wouldn't just be translation anymore. Well, and it would be um, more, I don't want to say more useful conversation. Mm -hmm. And again, I, I think what Duolingo does is great. I think it sets you up with a great base and, and foundation. 
Mm-hmm. But how many times in your life, okay, and just translating out of the language, let's say we're just going to put it in English, how many times have you ever say, you know what, the dog really likes milk? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's And I get the idea, it's boundaries. It's saying, hey, this word plus like plus this equals this idea. Yeah. And I get that. That's fantastic. But you're going to get to see more real conversation that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I agree. And, like, I, I think that the, the silly sentences are, they serve their purpose. Like, they're silly. They help you remember because they're silly. Right. But at the same time, it's just, like, I want to I want to learn useful things. Yeah. Like, it's, wh- why aren't there more useful things? And yeah. I think that having this, this forum, this chat, this something... Even if it's not on the main site, even if it's part of the paid the paid thing, like I mentioned earlier, you add more things to your paid thing. Yeah, I would pay cool. to get a dedicated chat. Yeah, because Facebook, man, I've tried to join Facebook groups for dueling. The only one, and again, man, my God, for the love of God, people, please, I love Esperanto, but it, it is not my favorite thing on the planet, and I hate to keep going back to it, but the only group I've ever seen on Facebook that is good as far as a Duolingo chat Mm-hmm. is it's the duolingo esperanto group and it's the one specific one i'm in i'm sure there's plenty but it's the ones of the moderators from the people who design the course for mm. duolingo yeah um there's very good discussion in there people use it then there are questions but the moderators are active will answer any questions and then like some of the moderators post stories in Esperanto, and yeah, that would be man. How why why would they not add that to the freaking? That's something they should add. Yeah, I think it would be great to just have just something, even if it's an offsite thing. Even if and like I know there's a lot of there's a lot of things on Duolingo that I have not used, um, because they just I don't like. There's the tiny cards thing, which is like their own flashcard right. yeah. or something. I haven't even touched it. I'm not interested in it. It it's, doesn't. It's nowhere near as good as memorize. Yeah, it's just like, I feel like the, the things that they're gonna do, it did. It just doesn't seem good or right the way that they advertise it to me. I'm just like, I don't know. I'm not interested in this. It doesn't seem helpful. Like it's not making it sound good. Um, yeah. it's super weird, man. It's um. The other thing is, I can't find. A... I thought, hey, tiny cards may be really, really good for learning verb conjugations. Mm-hmm. I have I searched for v- Spanish verbs, and all it teaches you is the infinitive form of the verb, which mm-hmm. is fine. I mean, at the end of the day, you have to know those. Yeah, you have to know, you know, uh, you know, you have to know that tener is to have. Like, you have to know the verb it is. But at the end of the day, why not have a section? And each section could be, okay, this is tener, present tense. Tengo, tienes, tiene, tienen, tenemos. Like, why would they not have that? Yeah, I don't I don't know. Especially for irregular verbs, man. I mean, mm-hmm. sure, regular verbs you don't need because you learn the one conjugation, you're good to go. But irregular yeah. verbs, man, makes no sense. It, it, it definitely doesn't. And like, well, there's that thing where you can get their, their verb conjugation charts sometimes if... You know where to look. Yeah. You're on the computer, you know, and you click on it. There's those those tips that I often forget while doing live streams. <laughs> um, like that's that's another thing about Duolingo. Like it's just it's hard to navigate. Yeah. I don't know what half of the stuff on the site is because like it doesn't. It's not user friendly. Yeah, it's weird. Like I don't know, man. It's it's just super strange. <laughs> They've yeah. changed so much stuff, man. Yeah. And that's the thing. Once I get used to something, it disappears. Yep. And I don't I still don't know. Dude, the Spanish course has almost no notes. And I'm thinking Really? Yeah. And I'm thinking Spanish is the second most spoken language in the world. <laughs> Why are there not notes? I understand look, the Esperanto course has more notes and it's not even quote unquote a real language. That's insane. Yeah. The Spanish I'm looking at this. has no notes at all. Oh, okay. I was looking at it. I'm looking at it right now, and like it has the first two have some, but the next two don't. Like, 
It's yeah, there's barely any notes yeah. from what I can, like, just skimming through it here. That's so strange. Yeah. And you would think just a simple anything. I mean, but there's not, man. That's ridiculous. Yeah, no, I just went to present two. There should be conjugation charts here at the very least. Yeah. Hey, standard verbs conjugate this way for AR verbs. It's O, A, A. You know what I mean? Like, why is that not there? Yeah, like, it looks like it teaches you esta. It teaches you se. Like, these are, these are irregular verbs. There should be a verb chart here. This is ridiculous. Yeah, dude. It's super weird. And, and I guess at the end of the day, that's on the course creators. But at this yeah. point, even if, like, they could grant someone modern uh, moderator uh, privilege. Like I said, Spanish is the second most spoken language in the world. You can find mm -hmm. somebody. Yeah, definitely. It would definitely. be near impossible for me to walk outside and... and if I stood stood outside for an hour, even in my area, five thousand people, if I walked around for an hour, I would find mm -hmm. somebody that spoke Spanish. Yeah, like almost guaranteed. Yeah, it's strange, man. I don't, I don't get it. But and like that's the thing. There's a lot of a lot of things that they're doing. They don't even have to pay people right now. Like mm -hmm. they've got a lot of things that are being done by volunteers. Yep. Like that's how a lot of these new languages are being put out. Like they could find someone. I don't think Chuck Smith got paid a dime to do the Esperanto course. He did it just because he wanted to make it. That's a shame. That dude, well, I can get into a whole podcast on that. <laughs> Chuck Smith saved that language, man. Yeah. Like, he, like obviously, there's a lot of people who helped pioneer the movement, but that yeah, dude definitely. put time <clears throat> on it. And thanks to him, man. Yeah, man. Over a million people are learning it. Which is insane. That is nuts. Absolutely. I just I just found a tab that I'm like semi exploring. I'm just opening up tabs to check out when we get off of this. Um because I've seen I've seen ads for like Duolingo stories, Duolingo podcasts, mm -hmm. and I've never like looked into them because I'm like, that doesn't sound good. Yeah. I listen like, to the I listened to the first podcast for Spanish. Uh-huh. And it's done cool. And it's the guy speaks super clear, which is very appreciative. Yeah. Um, but it's it's and I think actually Duolingo is trying to take steps into what to do after Duolingo, um, because do it mean. says it's a podcast for intermediate speakers. And honestly, podcast is probably a good place to start after you finish a course for to become an intermediate speaker. Yeah. Because of just hearing natural conversation. I would agree. Um. But like Duolingo stories and Duolingo podcasts, every time I've seen an ad for them, it was like an afterthought ad on Duolingo itself. Yeah. So I'm yeah. just like, I don't want to check that out. <laughs> yeah. The, the so. podcast was pretty cool. Uh, and I haven't checked out. I know there's that labs tab that has like several different things. I've checked out the podcast, but I haven't checked out much. Do you remember? Um, we'll get back on topic here in a second, but this is Duolingo related. Do you remember? Mm. I don't know if you do or not. You used to be able to, um, there was a thing called, they had a tab called immersion and they would yeah. set articles up for you in English and you would go through and you, and it was a community thing. Some people yeah. would translate certain parts and you would go through and translate and you could actually gain like experience translating things, um, and stuff like that. And you didn't have to translate the whole thing. If you only knew, Oh, I know that Ablo means i speak you could go in highlight ablo and then just put i speak or whatever like yeah or vice versa i guess i should say because it was english but um where did that go like, well, why did that just disappear i don't i i remember seeing one of those like afterthought ads for it that like you just when you're doing it on the you know on your phone you just skip by it because you're not paying attention to the ads mm -hmm. that's all i ever saw for it so i never checked it out yeah i just I didn't even realize that was missing because I never checked it out because they didn't make it sound appealing. It's just gone. It's just gone, dude. I'm weird. Yeah, no, that's... Um, that sounds really good. That sounds really fun. It was... I love doing it, man. I love doing it. Um, I only have one more issue that I, that I wrote down yeah. uh, for this real quick. And I know everybody on the planet could... And this goes into the translation thing, but... There's so many times where you'll type something and 
th- there's two problems I have. One, huh. the sentence will say something, and you'll type it, and it, you'll type it slightly different as to how you would say it, mm-hmm. and it'll mark it wrong. Even if it, and I understand the idea of wanting to make sure it has the same general point, but if it has the same general point, and I guess it's hard to do that, but it marks it wrong. And then two, and I know there's no way to fix this, man. How many times have you done something in Duolingo, and you're typing it, and you're going through, and it's going great, and you type something, and you leave an I off of a word, and it marks the whole God-blessed sentence wrong? All the time. I actually got super frustrated about that earlier today because I missed one letter. Yep. One letter. And I'm like, and it was an English. You're not, you're not here to correct my English. Mm-hmm. That's the thing that always gets me. I'm like, that. I'm here to learn this language, not English. What, don't yell at me about my English. Now, I'm a little lenient on it when it comes to, for example, if if it's, hey, we're going to the store, and you type T O O, because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, those are two completely different words. Yeah, but I don't know. It, it's, uh, you know, it, I don't like it because it's spelling. Because if I spell the word T-O-O, I know that I'm not, hey, I'm going also the store. I know that's not what's being said. You're saying too. Like, yeah. so I hate that you're judged on spelling. And I know that there's no way to correct that because they have to put a correct answer in for you to be able to get. And I know it's taken years to even be able to get the acceptable answers that we have. Yeah. But... Spelling, and I guess the only real actual way to get around that would be having a live person on the other side watching your test and being like, yeah. okay, yeah, that would be okay. <laughs> and so I, I know that's not going to happen, but I hate being marked incorrect. Dude, and when you get to those long sentences further down in, uh huh, and you, ha- especially when I'm on my phone, I'm at the end of Esperanto and I'm typing a 150-word a or 150-character thing here, and I leave an O off, well, you know, and it's like, <laughs> yeah. oh my God. Mm-hmm. But, and the thing about that is, is it's not consistent though. Absolutely. Like, sometimes I'll make a typo and it'll count me wrong. And then sometimes I'll actually make a mistake. I'll, I'll get something wrong and it'll approve it and give me like, you know, how it gives you that little correction down there. Yeah. And it's like, hey, oh, you seem to have this. a typo. And yeah. I was like, no, no, I got the grammar wrong is what happened there. Yep. But it was close enough. Gosh, it's so frustrating, man. Like I said, yeah. not a bash on Duolingo. I love the product, but there are yeah. a lot of issues with it. Yeah, definitely. And no matter what, there's always going to be a lot of issues with everything. So. Oh, yeah. Abs- absolutely there will there will never there will never not be issues like it's impossible and it kind of goes into it's funny because it goes hand in hand with languages it's if you're not making mistakes you're not doing something right so maybe exactly. that's the thing if duolingo wasn't making mistakes <laughs> it wouldn't be yeah. doing its job right as as a language teacher i agree and as long as it's putting out decent content at a decent price um, I don't, I, they can make all the mistakes they want because if they don't make mistakes, it means they're not changing anything. And if they're not changing anything, I'll stop using it because I want the program I'm using to grow and change and get better. Right. Um, and if they have to get worse before they get better, so be it. That's yeah. the way I see it. Yeah. And I mean, it, it's such a, it's such a big company now. It, it was app, it was the app of the year last year. Um, yes. I think so. it was either last year or the year. It might have been a couple of years in a row, but I mean, but because because there's this there's this allure, and even people who don't like languages, I don't care what anybody says. If you asked any person on the planet, hey, if you could learn another language and it not be a hassle, would you do it? And there's not anybody. I don't care what neck of the woods you go to. Everybody on the planet would be like, I could learn another language with no problem. Absolutely, I would do it. But I don't feel like putting the effort in. Anybody would do it. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's, languages bring people together and and it's so big. It's weird to me, though, that that, that a language thing can be so highly, it's cool. Like, as as language fans, we love it. Like, that's great. The app of the year wasn't a game. 
It wasn't, you know, some stupid Snapchat nonsense app, going yeah. on. Yeah, it was it was a language learning app. How crazy is that? Yeah, that's it's great. I love it. But uh, hopefully, I don't know. It just, I don't even know. Like, I've got so many thoughts in my head right now. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> yeah, and I think, uh, which we'll still talk for another minute or two, but I, I know we were yeah. going to talk about some of the things that Duolingo could implement to be better. Um, but we're at an hour and 15 minutes now. So that, that may be like wow. a part two follow up podcast. Um, yeah. Cause I, I don't mind talking. I could talk forever about languages. As you know, I think after we ended the podcast last week, we talked for like an hour or so or more, but yeah, I want to keep these hour and 15 to hour and 30 is where I'd like to keep them just for, I mean, that's, that's a standard podcast length. Yeah. You don't want to get it too long. So, but, um, but yeah, like I said, man, in, in no way, shape, or form. And if I got to start cutting down on my Esperanto, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it, but like I said, it, it's just what I have to go on. Um, the the program is great. Yeah, it's, it's a great, it's a great program. It does what it does well. Yep. Um, the biggest problem I think is that people don't know what it does. They they yep. misunderstand it. Yep. And and when I when people when people start saying the capital F word. Mm -hmm. along with duolingo you're setting yourself up for failure because if i finish the spanish tree am i going to go be able to go to any spanish-speaking country and be perfectly fine absolutely not, not am i going to be able to get around and talk to people absolutely yeah but it's not going to be in depth you know i'm not going to be able to talk which i don't talk this crap with anybody anyway but it, it, you know you're not going to be able to have like a deep political conversation or something like that you know yeah, um, exactly. You be won't be able basic. to go there and talk anything political. You won't be able to talk religion, that sort of stuff. Right. But you'll be able to go there and say, what's the best restaurant and how do I go there? Absolutely. So, and that's, you know, that's that's another thing to even go into. Um, and they talk about it a little bit on, on Polygot Progress uh, podcast. Kind of the difference of people kind of misinterpreting, you know, what different things are and are you learning this to be a tourist? Mm -hmm. Are you learning this just because you're going and you just want to get around or are you learning this? Like there's a whole lot of different things that you can get into on language learning for the purposes. You know, uh, I talk about Moses all the time, Laoshu and yeah, so many people are like, Oh, he's not fluent. He's not fluent. And I'm like, well, he's never said he was he Yeah, was never in his life. He, I don't think I've watched Moses for, many years well before i ever knew um and and began to talk to him and, and become friends with him like i watched him on youtube way yeah. before i ever started talking to him and i've never in my life heard him use the word that he has used on himself that he is fluent yeah um and he's conversational and people rag on him and i'm like but that's what he how can we rag on somebody when that's what they want like he just wants to be able to go out and have basic conversations with people. Now, there are languages he's good in. He's been speaking yeah. Chinese for 18 years, and he can do whatever. Mm -hmm. But if he wants to speak Bulgarian to a level of just going into a restaurant and being like, hey, I speak Bulgarian a little bit. Isn't that cool? Yeah. What do you have to eat? Who cares, man? If he's having fun, that's what it is. Exactly. And that's that's a whole nother thing that I'm super passionate about because I don't want to learn all the languages to the fluent level. I don't care about being mistaken for a native. Yeah. I just want to be able to eat. That's <laughs> that's my main concern. Yep. And because anything the thing is in in a situation the language learning is weird because the idea is you want to learn all this stuff. But anytime you go out you're not going to talk about 99% of the crap that you learn. Exactly. I don't go into a store down the road here and say, uh, I'm just trying to think of an example right off. You know, you're not going to be like, um, for, just for the sake of argument, hey man, what did you think about the presidential election? Let's talk about some political party. Like, that's not going to happen. Yeah. You're only going to talk about that with your friends or nobody, mm -hmm. you know, and so... Yeah. At the idea and the idea of learning a language is you probably I don't know I guess some people know but you know so, some people you know would know that language but it's not something you're gonna use on an average day. Yeah, exactly, and it's not even like even in English there are things that I can't talk about. 
Mm-hmm. Cars. I don't know. I don't know the words for it. Like, and so like everyone's like, oh, but this person can't do this in their target language. They're not fluent. I'm like, I couldn't talk about you know chemistry in English. Nope. I'm. It's my native language. Like, it's, <laughs> there's a lot of things I have no idea. I couldn't talk to you about even even going out to a bar. I wouldn't be able to talk to you about that because I don't know anything about it. Right. Yeah. I've never I don't, been a bar guy. Drink. I've never been an, uh, an out guy, you know, like going out and hanging out and stuff. Yeah. Like there are words and phrases that are used there that I don't, I don't know what these drinks are. I don't know like what the difference between a bar and a club is. I don't know. Like, it's, I don't know that bar clubs, pubs, they're all the same to me. Right. Yep. And, and, and the example that I always use is, when people talk about, oh, somebody's not fluent, and I'll say, okay, so if I go outside right now mm-hmm. and I pop the hood on my car, <laughs> I can name about one of those things in there. Yeah. So I clearly don't know every word in the English language. Therefore, are you saying I'm not fluent in English? You know what I mean? Like, Exactly. Um, of course, you know, again, I, I, I stray away from that word, and it's because of those types of people, but... You know, which we we could do a whole cast on just what the idea of fluency is. Oh, that would be fun. Because I think it. I mean, to me, it's person to person, man. What's your definite? Mm-hmm. What are you trying to accomplish? Exactly. If you're if you're communicating what you're trying to accomplish to communicate, who am I to say you're not? Exactly. If you've got your goal and you hit it and you can do it, good enough for me. Yep. So. But uh, I think we'll end the podcast here. We're at about an hour and 20 minutes right now. Um, hopefully that was fun for you guys. I had, I had a fun, I, you know, we need to do a part two on things to implement because that was supposed to be part today. Um, yeah. But obviously there's a lot of stuff wrong with Duolingo, so we didn't get to the what What could they do to fix it. Um, yeah. But I had, I had fun, man. I appreciate you coming on. Um, yeah, it was definitely a fun time. And all that stuff. So definitely if you're... Yeah, I know you, you have a way bigger following than me, but for the four people that follow my channel, if you are on this, go check out Dakota at Language Learning Lounge. Does some stuff pretty often. Does some super cool stuff with like Magic the Gathering and uh, stuff. Do you play D&D, by the way? I don't know what happened on my computer. I don't know. I think it froze. We're going to end it there, so we'll see you guys next week.